Hey guys, Alton here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our journey to learn Linux fundamentals for ethical hacking. So this video is going to be video number two in our series on learning the fundamentals of Linux for ethical hacking. So in this video, we're just going to do some basic stuff. I'm going to talk about why we use Kali Linux as our distribution of choice for ethical hacking. And I'm also going to talk about the two different primary GUI interfaces that you can use. So the graphical user interface for Linux. So there are two different main options for Kali Linux. I'm gonna show you the two different options because some of you are gonna like one and some of you are gonna like the other. And I'm gonna show you how to use one or the other. So let's go ahead, let's switch over to my computer screen and let's get into it. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about why people use Kali Linux as their distribution of choice for ethical hacking. And I also want to show you the differences between the Kali XFCE GUI interface and the GNOME, which is G-N-O-M-E GUI interface. And so let's go ahead and let's take a look. And what I have here open on my computer are two different instances of Kali up and running. This is the one that we set up. So let's go ahead and let's log in with this one. And this one is running off of the XFCE default desktop environment for Kali version 2020.1. So older iterations of Kali had the GNOME I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it had the GNOME interface and that's what's loaded on this one. So let's go ahead and log in on the one on the right. But the newest one, they switch the GUI interface to the newer version of XFCE. And what you'll notice is that they look similar, but they're a little different. So, and let me go ahead and expand this one out a little bit. So the biggest difference here is you'll notice that we have our, our standard desktop uh, icons that you would typically see on most operating systems here on the GNOME is we have a little sidebar. So that gives us a link to our files. This gives us a link to Firefox, our terminal, text editor, Metexploit, Burp Suite, Cherry Tree, and if we click here, it'll open up all the different apps and I can scroll down through them or I can search for them up here as well. So if I just type in ME, there's Metasploit. This one doesn't have that. It doesn't have this sidebar and this list here. So let's go ahead and let's click on here and get back to the desktop. And if we take a look, you'll see applications over here. And this is why we use Kali Linux, because they've gone ahead and they pre-installed all the common different tools that you would use for vulnerability assessments and ethical hacking penetration tests. So multiple different categories, lots of different tools. Whereas if you just installed, let's say, for example, just Debian Linux with nothing on it, you would have to install these applications yourself. Now, if we go over here to the XFCE interface, if we click here, we have the same thing. Of course, the menu looks a little bit different. And if I click into these, we can see everything here. We can get to the settings here. On this one, there's a little top menu. So we have some basic things, right? We have, we can click here to get to our home. We can get to our terminal here. We can record our screen. And this will allow us to switch from one workspace to another. So what is a workspace? Well, let me go ahead and open up terminal on this one. And I'll open up Firefox. And what you can do is you can switch between different workspaces. And on this one, I'll open up terminal and I'll open up our home directory as well. And let me go ahead and minimize that. And let me close that because I opened up two instances of terminal and I'll just click here to open that up. So what we can do is if we want to, we can assign these to different workspaces. So on this one, if I right click, I can move this to workspace number two. And what I can do is I can switch between different workspaces. So you'll notice if I click here, 
changes to the other workspace. If I click back to here, it switches to the other workspace. So it's like having two desktop environments. And this one's very similar. If I click here, workspace one, if I switch to here, we're on workspace two. And you'll notice I didn't assign any of them to workspace two. So they're both on workspace one right here. But if I close the browser, and I, of course, opened up two instances of terminal here, but and if I go to workspace two and open up my browser, then we're on our second workspace. So some slight differences in regards to the design of the GUI. The top menu up here, in terms of this, we have our power, we can lock it here, we can click here to change our power settings, we can do some additional things, notifications, our sound, our network here and our time. And this one's a bit different. Sound, network settings are here, switching the workspaces and recording. Now in terms of one or the other, in regards to which one you'd want to use, it's, it's really up to you. They both have the same functionality. I believe that the XFCE is the one that has the Kali undercover. And let's see if we can actually get that running. So let me go ahead and pull up that command. All right, so here's the command. It's very simple. You just do it in terminal. And I believe that you can only do this on the XFCE GUI interface. So let's go ahead and let's open up terminal and we'll type in Kali undercover. And what this does is the GUI interface now makes this look like Windows. So let's go ahead and let's make this one full screen because I think this looks pretty cool. You'll notice that our start menu down here looks just like Windows. Our icons look like Windows. Everything over here looks like Windows. And the whole purpose of them doing this is it allows you to make this look like you're working on a Windows machine. So if you're doing some sort of an ethical hacking on some organization and maybe you're within the organization, this looks like you're on a Windows machine and you're not on a Linux machine. So pretty cool. Now I'm 99% certain that this won't work on the GNOME and that's one of the reasons why they switched to the XFCE GUI. But what we can do is we can just test it real quick and let me see if I can do an autocomplete and let's see if it works and no it doesn't. And notice it says it only works on XFCE. It does not work on the GNOME GUI interface. So if you wanna have this capability, and let me go ahead and close this because we don't need it. If you wanna have this capability of having this look and feel like Windows, then you're gonna to have to use the XFCE. Now I do wanna show you how you can actually get this up and running with GNOME. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna do that next. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pause my video and shut, shut both of these down because we only need one open. So things move a little faster and I'll be back in one second. All right, so we just have one of our systems open, which is the clean install of the machine that we imported into VirtualBox. Now to get back to the standard view, you just actually have to do Kali Undercover again. So let me just show you real quick. So we use Kali Undercover, and to autocomplete, you just hit tab. So that's a quick little tip there. So we click that, that's gonna take us into Windows, and if we type in Kali Undercover again, it's gonna take us back to our standard GUI interface. Now, let me show you, for those of you that do wanna switch over to the GNOME interface, uh, one thing that I recommend is make sure you take a snapshot before you do this, just in case you wanna have your clean install like I did in the first video. For those of you that didn't watch it, make sure you watch the first video. So what do we need to do? Well, we just need to do a couple of different things. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up Terminal and let me go ahead and let's change our font size really quickly on this. So appearance change, let's go up to, okay. And let me make this full screen to hit apply. So let's get back out a full screen and I'm gonna clear this out so it's nice and clean. So we need to do a couple different commands. You can't do them together, but I found that doing them individually is a lot cleaner. So we need to do uh, sudo. 
This allows us to get into privilege mode, into our root user mode, because with Kali Linux version 2020, our standard login is a non-root user, which means a non-admin user. So we need to type in sudo, and then we're going to do apt update. And this command is going to update our repositories for this so it knows that it's pulling down the latest edition of the Kali GNOME. So we need to type in our password, which is Kali as well. Let me make sure that I'm typed into here. And it may be incorrect because I may have typed it twice. So let's do it again. Now this is going to update the repositories for this. So we'll let it work and do its thing. Again, in regards to how long this takes, it's really up to the speed of your system. So on some virtual machines, this just may go very, very quick. On other ones, it just may take some time and may be very slow. So again, just let it work, let it do its thing. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to run another command. So we're gonna type in sudo again, and we're gonna do apt install, and then we're gonna do Kali dash desktop and I'm just gonna hit tab to complete that portion and GN and I'm gonna hit tab again to complete that so this is a command that we're gonna do it is a sudo apt install Kali desktop gnome we're gonna hit enter and it's gonna ask us if we want to continue I'm gonna hit Y for yes hit enter and let it do its thing and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this run and once it's done, we're gonna reboot our machine. But before we reboot, of course, we're gonna take a snapshot. So I like to always take snapshots after I do anything so I can revert back to the previous snapshot. So I'm gonna pause the video and let this run. You're noticing down here it's at 10%. So this may take about two or three minutes on your machine. It could be anywhere from a few minutes up to 10 minutes. So just let it run and then we'll be back when it's done. All right, so now that we're done, it gives us a list of some of the basic info regarding the changes on it. Now, if you do have your font zoomed in like me, you'd have to scroll down to the bottom and what you have to do is just hit Q to quit to get out of here. So once it's done, it's gonna ask us to configure our display manager, we're going to hit OK. And I just simply, I always keep it at light DM. I don't make the change, so hit tab, hit OK. Let this continue. Um, it's going to go a little bit longer. Again, you notice it's at 1%, it's taking its time. So again, a few more minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and wait for this to complete. All right, so once it's done, it's gonna take you right back to the prompt for terminal. And like I said, I like to take snapshots. So click on machine, click take snapshot. And I'm gonna say GNOME GUI installed. Hit okay. And let it take the snapshot. That way we have a snapshot here right when we did this. And of course I also have, I've done this previously before, so I'm gonna have a couple of these, of these different snapshots for installing GNOME, but I also have one for the clean install. So now what we can do is reboot. We can do the command for sudo reboot, or we can go up to here and hit reboot. But because with ethical hacking, you're gonna be working in terminal a lot, it makes sense to do a lot of the commands in terminal. So we're gonna run that command there and let our virtual machine reboot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let it boot up. I'm not gonna click on there. Once it takes us to the login screen, that's where we can select and tell it to choose GNOME. So you can run a command in Kali itself as well, or you can just simply do it from the login screen. And I'll show you how you can switch from one to the other, which is really nice. So I don't wanna do the command because I feel this is an easier way. So if we click here, right here, you're gonna notice that there is the default one, and then there's GNOME. So if I switch to GNOME and we log in, what you're gonna see is we have the GNOME GUI interface once this boots up and logs in all the way. And it may take a minute. So first time booting it up. And now we have the GNOME interface. But 
if we log out, so if I click here and I click log out, it takes us back to the login screen. I can switch here. You're going to notice that it looks like a big foot, but if I switch back to default X session, type in Cali and Cali, it's going to switch back to the default XFCE GUI interface. So this allows you to go back and forth between those two different interfaces and use whichever one that you like. Like I said, if you want to use a Kali undercover Windows interface, then definitely use this one. But if you like the other one, use the other one. So anyways, that's going to conclude this video. What I plan on doing in the next video is I plan on getting us into some terminal work, meaning doing some basic commands. So understanding Linux fundamentals with some of those basic commands. So that's the goal for the next video. In this video, the goal was just to tell you about these two different GUI interfaces, show you how you could install GNOME based off us importing the version that only had XFCE, showing you Kali Undercover, and also talking about why we use Kali Linux because it includes all these different tools rather than us having to install them ourselves. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.